Hey guys, Double Wide Six, and today I'm going to be making a video on how to make a blower for either your fireplace or, in my case, I have a pellet stove. We got a little bit of a cold snap of weather, and uh, it's, a, it's a good time to do this project. So I'll show you what I'm doing. So as many of you guys know, I use a pellet stove mainly to heat my garage. And it's all the way across the garage. It has a blower on it, but it just doesn't blow the air all the way across. So I've got a great solution for this. So you guys that have been uh, sticking with and subscribing to my channel, um, you know in the past I made a video on how to make a spot welder using a, a microwave transformer. And this is actually like the squirrel cage blower thing from a microwave. And I had this thing laying around. And uh, I figured I'd go through, wire it up. And we'll try and stick it right on top of the uh, pellet stove. It is plastic, so we're going to have to do something to protect it a little bit. But I'm kind of figuring it out as I go here. So this thing came out of a GE microwave and they were nice enough to put the uh, wiring diagram so M on this thing is the motor so the fan itself the black wire is high speed the yellow wire is low speed and I guess you could switch in between the two yellow and red that little symbol in there means capacitor and because of the way that symbol's drawn, it's a capacitor that has no polarity. And then the blue wire, that's showing AC power coming in, and it says it's 120 volt, 60 hertz. So we're going to go ahead, follow this diagram, wire this up. So I'm going to wire this thing up on high speed. So according to the wiring diagram, high speed is black. So I'm going to take my one of these AC wires and since AC is alternating current so it doesn't really matter which one you put the white or the black from your plug so pick one put it on there for a quick test here and the other one that has to go from our line according to the wiring is the uh, blue one so put that on there The low speed switch is the white wire, and I'm not going to use that. And the other two wires are going to go to a capacitor. And luckily that wiring diagram uh, tells us the size of capacitor. It's a 10 microfarad uh, capacitor. And it doesn't, like I said, this thing doesn't have polarity so you can hook up either of these two capacitor wires to the capacitor and uh, we're just going to plug this thing in and make sure it's working good whoa hang on a sec really throws some air. I can feel it over here. Wow. We're going to have to turn down the speed. So I wired it up in low and that seems to be pretty good. Um, so the next thing that I was looking at was putting a switch on it so I can turn the thing on and off. And then I was thinking maybe I just want to unplug and plug it back in. Um, but then I came to the conclusion that I wanted to run a, a smaller switch. So instead of having a switch like this, I'm going to do a smaller one. And then I can probably use like an electrical box like this. And I could put the capacitor in there as long as I cover up those ends. And then the other thing is that the, the whole thing is plastic. Now the top of the pellet stove doesn't get that hot, but I have this real thick piece of extruded aluminum. And I'm gonna actually mount that on there. And I think I wanna flip this over 
this way so that when the air comes out it's a little closer to the top of the stove and I'm thinking I'm gonna put an electrical box like up here with the switch capacitor in there and then uh, just have the plug coming out the back so that's the plan so the first thing I do is mount this motor on this aluminum plate the next step here is to mount this box so I'm going to pre-drill and put little the same screws right in there to hold it so to attach the box I pre-drilled it just so I don't crack anything and I'm using these nice fat headed self tappers as you can see I bought like a thousand of these and uh, they work really well for sheet metal or plastic well I have everything kind of pushed through the box and now I'm just going to go through and do a little bit of uh, soldering, if I can find my solder. So the plan is, um, I have this heat shrink. And this tool here, it's, it's actually part of my soldering iron. Um, it's a small heat gun. So I'm going to go through and I'm just sealing up all the wires that I soldered just so that the ends can't touch this metal box or anything. And uh, I have a nice little kit with all the heat shrink. So I have different sizes, some of it's different colors. I use some black that's probably hard to see that's on the uh, capacitor because I wanted to seal that off. I was thinking about using terminal ends that are covered but since I have this shrink wrap kit it's a little easier this way. So we'll just go through and heat these up and get all this shrunk down. So here's how we're doing this. We'll just slip in the shrink rank, sh shrink wrap over the wires. And I take this mini heat gun and this stuff will shrink right down. So if you check out the description, I'll put a link down here where you can get any of the tools from this project. just a little grease Alright guys, I'm Double Wide 6 and hopefully you enjoyed this video. These actual fan squirrel cage things cost a fair bit of money. I will put a link in the description where you can order one if you don't want to build one. And I'll also link a lot of the tools that I used in this project that came in real handy. So anyhow, I'm Double Wide 6, and if you haven't become a subscriber, please do. You can click the link at the bottom of the video. Thanks for watching.